then call Allah by his name, Ar-Rahim. And maybe it's some other struggle. Maybe it's some other issue that you're dealing with. Call Allah by the names that you call, that they're meant to be called when you're struggling with something, right? We learn, رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَرُحَمْنَا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Feel free to take pictures of this, to have this, we're recording this, inshallah ta'ala. But there's so many du'as that are beautiful that capture the different names of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one that we're taught um, because it comes directly in the Qur'an. Oh, our Lord, we have believed, so forgive us. Have mercy on us. You are the best of those who are merciful. When you call Allah by His names, it doesn't matter how sinful you feel. It doesn't matter how many times you feel like you've messed up and you have this issue that just does not seem to be getting better. He's capable of changing everything and anything. Never, ever, ever downplay the power of dua. Do everything you possibly can. And we go through things. One, two, three. These are options, you know, things you can do. But never downplay the, op the, the power of dua when you think you've tried everything you can possibly try. Then one year, in one of the conferences, this, a sister came up, and she said, Dr. Tanya, yeah. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. And uh, you don't recognize me? <laughs> and I do this very often. <laughs> Does anybody who knows, mashallah. They're like, don't you? And I'm like, mashallah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, so-and-so? Wallahi, like, I truly, truly could not recognize her. Like, it's as though someone, I don't know, Yanni, she, she, she didn't do any cosmetic surgery or anything like that. But it was like her face was completely different. And, um, and she said, oh, I have to tell you, I need dua. And I thought, I'm going to hear the same story that I've been hearing for many years. And she said, but this time it had to do with her daughter. And I said, khair. And she said, um, she got in a terrible car wreck. Oh, subhanAllah, ya Rabbi. And she said, oh, no, 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 she's, she's okay now. I said, okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, but you have to understand, that is a good thing. And I said, how could a car wreck possibly be a good thing? And then she said, when that happened, the person who had hit her was a drunk driver. And for whatever reason, it snapped her husband, who had been in this like alcoholic stupor for so long, snapped him out of it. And she, you know, when you know somebody who's been drinking for a long time, you can't just sort of cold turkey very easily. You cannot. SubhanAllah. It takes time. But this man, cold turkey. And then she points over there where the masjid was. And she goes, he's there. And I was like, he's there? <laughs> this man who like refused to pray, who refused to refuse, like everything. And we would say counseling, refuse counseling. Imam, talk to an imam, refuse the imam. Wouldn't even step foot in the masjid. Was literally in the musalla. And she said he cold turkey, stopped the alcohol, got clean, got better started praying and he was now fully involved in this family after years and years and years and years of her complaints and she said you always said the power of dua and i thought la ilaha illallah <laughs> i mean sometimes not always do you hear that the full ending of a story necessarily but this was amazing truly amazing and something you don't necessarily always expect to hear and so even when you feel like a person you're going to give up on them don't, because Allah doesn't give up on us. Even if you've given up on yourself about something, don't, because Ar-Rahim has not given up on you. Right? And even if you feel like your sins are mountains, there is nothing mountainous to Allah Azza wa Jalla.